took away my shame because of my reform. We've been living in the country a long time, over 10 years. When it was time for us to apply for our settlement in the country, I was refused. We had already submitted our application together. But as I am, I depend on her. All the time, when she was getting, I was getting also my visa. When, when she was refused, but the, uh, now the, my employer started asking for my visa. I told them that my visa is being processed in the home office. I will get it very soon. We didn't have the right to work. We were facing many difficulties. Uh, even my husband didn't have time to uh, write to work. So we were like stuck. We didn't think about going back home because back home as well, we don't have anything. Since we've been living here for long, expecting and hoping that we are going to have our right to settle down our life here with, the fam with our family. And I was revolted because from my point of view, my right has been uh, taken away because um, I didn't have the, the freedom and I didn't have uh, the right to buy a property, actually. It was difficult because most of the agency was asking me what was my status. So I feel like it was a humiliation. So when I received the letter, the refusal letter, a few weeks after I started um, receiving deportation letter by post, as I do believe in the word of God, I start to get revolt inside of me legally. I know that God was with me, but I need it to prove on paper. And that's when we decided, when the campaign um, announced in the church, we decided to go for the, for the campaign, expecting that me and my husband, both of us, were going to have our right of settlement. We prepare ourselves, like, spiritually, financially, and uh, physically as well. I had some savings, but I took my savings, I sacrificed also. All that I had, a suitcase of new clothing that I didn't, how to wear at all. I place all on the altar. One week before my hearing date, I receive another letter, another notice showing that my appeal center has been reallocated next to a building where deportation people are being kept to remove from the country. As you said, so many issues happen over the change of, of location, uh, threat of deportation. At that moment, I had peace. I know God is with me. I am going in the court. God will be with me. God will be my witness. God will defend me and I will come out victorious. Even when we left the, the court, the, the courtroom, I spoke with my solicitor and he knocked his head and um, I didn't say anything. He said, just wait. Let's uh, get the um, decision that it will take about four weeks time to come. But actually, it took only one week for me to receive the decision. On, on, on Sunday, I presented my tithe. I went to the court on Wednesday, same week. The following week, Monday, I presented my offering on the altar. Early morning, I went to present my offering. One o'clock in the afternoon, I received my decision, telling me the judges say that um, my settlement has been granted. So long our God lives, our, bright, our future is bright. It will be more brighter. May God bless you, all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are back for one more week of prayer live here from our altar of our headquarters in Stockholm together with you and we're going to pray right now and we're going to start already 
this uh, this short program to pray for you to pray for those who came already to the altar we have here requests of people who already climbed the altar of the sacrifice these days and those who are still climbing to the altar those who are still fulfill their sacrifices everyone that is living this campaign of Israel over the world we are living this faith this faith of revolt where we are sure that the promises of God will gonna come true in your life if you are in that faith with us if maybe you are watching me from a, 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 someone shared this prayer with you are watching me from a hospital wherever our voice reach maybe you are watching us for the first time be sure that if you believe in the power of prayer the Holy Spirit can touch you wherever you are can heal you can set you free because there is a power through the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray right now. Pastor Diego is going to start the prayer, then I will end it. Let's enter in God's presence. My Father and my Lord, right now we join our faith with all those, my Lord, that are watching, people that are in need, people that put their life on the altar, and those who are on the way to come, my Lord, and even some people that don't even know what is to sacrifice. But right now, my Lord, manifest your power. Show your wonder, my Lord, in the life of this person touch everyone who is praying with us with your fire awaken their revolt awaken their faith open their eyes my lord to see what faith can do in their lives as those who already climbed the altar and have left here my lord their sacrifice their blood which is crying out together with them right now all that they trust on you my lord so let they receive this strength let they not lose my lord the strength that they had until they climb it and all those who are on the way my lord nothing is stop them from obeying your voice from doing what they have to do so right now receive strength receive power let the fire of god touch you wherever you are bringing healing bringing power bringing courage to do what you have to do to obey the word of god in the name of the lord jesus oh my god and wherever our voice reach right now i pray that your spirit may reach your people my god and those who are sick through the power of the prayer they are healed in this moment those who are oppressed those who don't know what to do with their lives my father we present all the lives to you my god maybe this person is watching us for the first time and this person is curious to know what this is about let your spirit right now to penetrate in the heart my father and remove all suffer all depression my god and make my god your presence to be upon them oh father bless those who have already climbed the altar those who are still on the way to the altar and let the fire to reach up heaven and the answer to come from above my father to make a revolution in the lives of your people to make a difference that is as it is written between those who believe and those who don't oh my father we agree the victory of your people we agree the transformation and we determine peace happiness and strength in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit we bless all of you here from the altar from the altar of the living God we bless all of you and those who believe and agree say amen and amen my dear friend believe that the Holy Spirit has already transformed you that the Holy Spirit has already blessed you and we we are living this faith of this campaign of Israel of Gideon and we saw Pastor Diego this wonderful testimony of this couple that they are the Bible of today they are the Bible of today the proof that God exists, that God is the same of yesterday, today, and forever. And the same that happened in their lives can happen in the life of this person that is watching us. It's true because although, although the lawyer was negative towards their case, the lawyer was not hoping that they would get the answer. The assurance of what they did on the altar did not let her down, did not make her to lose the trust, the confidence of what she has done on the altar. And they both, men and women of faith, they said, okay, God is going to judge the case now. If the lawyer thinks it's, it's not going to go well, it's in the hands of God. And the lawyer said, you're going to get an answer maybe after two weeks. 
and less than one week they got the answer. Amen. And this is this is an expire today for those. This is an expiration today for those who want a transformation of life. If you want a transformation of life, my friend, do that. Use your faith and God will bless you. Today we're going to talk about very shortly about the three steps of the sacrifice that we spoke yesterday in the church. That is a is a, is a, a way for people to understand what sacrifice is about and how they have to act because many people unfortunately pastor they fail sometimes in the first step sometimes in the second or even sometimes in the third step the third steps of the sacrifice and the very first step is listen to the voice of God we see that everyone who God call to do something great and we believe in Gideon we, we, we have be giving the example of Gideon that was the smallest one uh, Abraham Moses and today this couple that we just saw the testimony all of them they were moved by the voice of God and why the voice of God because the voice of God is to make sure is to make it clear not to make sure but to make it clear that is God that is talking because one thing is mean to say to you all do this and you say, okay, but he's a, he, who gives me the guarantee that is right? Because all of us sometimes we think that A is not A, is B uh, afterwards. But when is God speaking? That gives already a certainty. No, God is saying, if God says, for example, God said to Gideon, take the second bull, you see, clear. Take the second bull of seven years old, tear down the altar of Baal. And build an altar for me on the top of that rock, ne? on the strong rock, and make your sacrifice there. God was clear. There was no doubt. There was no doubt such as uh, was the second or the first or the third. When God speaks, it's spot on. Because we, we do not know what the person can do or they can make it. Uh, I don't know. You don't know. We look to somebody. Sometimes we think... Uh, this person, poor of her, has no condition to do anything. But God, he knows exactly what the person can do. I remember many testimonies that sometimes we look to the person and we say, Oh my goodness, this person is going through a hard time, tough time, cannot do anything on the altar. Maybe if she come with a little thing, it's already going to be big for her. But when the person is giving the testimony, we get surprised of what she did. Because she was able to build, to raise a such great sacrifice that we would say, if it was me to ask you to do this, I would never imagine you could be doing. Things that sometimes, Pastor, that uh, if the person comes to ask us, we will say, no, no, take it easy. Nah? <laughs> take it easy. No, uh, because there are things that, uh, what you said is true. There are things that sometimes if the person comes, because we are human beings, we are not superheroes. Sometimes we say to the person, no, no, no wait, wait. But it was the faith. And there is a reason why we don't ask. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. Because we cannot guarantee to the person that what we ask will change their life. But God can. And what is the strongest of all is that is a private relationship between the person and God. Nobody knows. It's you and God, God and you. And this is like couples, né? That like marriage. Né? When the person married is the person and God, the, per God and, uh, the person and the wife. Né? In my case, my, myself with my wife, my wife and me. And with God is exactly the same thing. So this is the very first step. Listen to the voice of God. The second step is what? Obey God, wh uh, obey what God asks of me. I listen to the voice of God, I obeyed what God asks of me. And it's very hard because, as we spoke earlier, there is the conflict. What God asks is always something that we can do, but it's very hard. Our human nature will say, No, this, no, God. This, is, this conflict is a must. Because if there is no conflict, as we spoke earlier, if you're going in the direction that is, uh, the way that the devil wants us to go, he's not going to interfere. He's going to actually cheer us, cheer for us. Go, keep on going that way. But when we are going in a direction contrary what the devil wants, he's going to put everything in between us and the altar to try to stop us. And if the person don't have this conflict, it's because it's not a sacrifice. Because sacrifice has conflict. There is a, a fight. 
There is one voice that says go, another voice stays. You know problems. I, I remember counseling people, not just counseling people, even with us, sometimes very huge problems starting in the time of the sacrifice. Things that happened for us to just to give up. It shakes us. Exactly. It shakes Like Abraham, no? when we talk about that, we remember Abraham. God told him to walk three days in the desert towards Mount Morai. In other words, three days. Imagine those Thinking. three days, how hard. I think that was the terrible three days of Abraham because it was like that conflict. You said earlier, uh, Gideon, God spoke to him and he did it. Only at night. At night, né? and he took even 10 men with him <laughs> because he was afraid. So in other words, there is that, uh, that conflict. And that conflict show and give us the assurance that God is with us. We are stronger. You see, the moment that you obey God's voice, you become stronger. Become stronger. God don't obliged me. For example, if I want to live now and do what is wrong, God is not going to tell me, oh, please stay, don't do that. No, I have free will. But you know, the spirit, when you obey God, when you listen to the voice of God, God gives you a certain strength that even though that you shake, even though that you cry, even though that is hard, you step on your feet and you say, I'm going to go. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to the end because I know that God will honor us. And the third and the last step is basically for those who have already made their sacrifices, but also for you who are or, or still um, prepare your sacrifice, stay on the altar. Do not lose focus. There are people that we say that they come to the altar like tourism. Né? They pass by and they drop their, their, their request and now let me live my life. Let me, uh, it's over. <sighs> no, we need to remain on the altar. Jesus said the following, if anyone wants to come after me, I, and I like this verse so much. Let him to deny themselves, pick up the cross, and follow me. Resuming these three steps in one means, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Stay on the altar. The devil does everything for the person to lose their focus, for the person to be distracted, to try to convince the person that was useless what the person did. That was, and you know, I, I told the people 10 o'clock in the morning today, Pastor, the, the sacrifice is fire. Né? You agree with me? I agree. It's a fire. But when the person don't stay focused on the altar, it's the same thing if the person takes a bucket of water and 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 then and then what they is the fire? They put to lose everything they did. Exactly. And the truth is that we must stay on the altar and have the focus now on what God have have told us to do because when he told Gideon to come, he already showed the pro the purpose for Gideon. Gideon already knew what was going to come. Now, what would be the blessing? The same was with Abraham. I'm going to show you that land. You're going to deliver my people. And the same, you have the reason of the revolt that put you here on the altar. That made you to trust God with all. With all your life. With all your sacrifice. And have you done everything? You must remain on the altar. Because outside of the altar, you are lost. Because these days, after we place here our lives... If we leave the altar, we're going to be afraid, we're going to be worried, we're going to be concerned because we put our trust, our confidence, our ground is on the altar. Mm -hmm. If we leave the altar, we're going to be without the ground because what's going to be of tomorrow and then and now? No, if you are on the altar, you don't have these questionings because you say, is God, God is with you. Here I am just, just trusting you. I'm confident in you. I don't lose the focus. I'm not going to be wor worried with the enemies, the Midianites that are already defeated. They are already confused. Now I just have to follow God's guidance. Exactly. It's not sitting down. Be sure that I'm not telling you to sit down and wait. I'm telling you, wait, follow God's guidance. Because God, after Gideon put everything, told him, now you're going to go there on the top of the mountain, looking down at the valley, and you're going to have to do an act of courage. But now Gideon was another man. And there was no sword, there was no weapon. There was only the, the word. word of God with him. My dear friend, I hope that that helped you. 
help you for you who have already come to make sure that uh, you not just to, you d you didn't just pass by and for you who are still preparing yourself to come to the altar you know you can make a transformation prioritize the holy spirit we have been telling the people if you didn't receive yet the baptism in the holy spirit this must be your revolt i don't accept to pass on the altar and not to stay on the altar i must be baptized with the holy spirit and have god's presence in my life tomorrow we're going to be back 9 p.m uh, i mean 10 minutes before 9 10 minutes before 9 with a testimony but nine o'clock we're gonna be back for one more prayer and also tomorrow we're gonna be here the whole day tomorrow is the day that we pray for healing at eh? 10 o'clock in the morning and 7 p.m in english four o'clock in portuguese here in our headquarters big has got 106 if you need more information about our help center if you need more information about the campaign of israel you can visit our website www.ucg dot s e okay was a pleasure to be with you may the lord of the bible bless you all and until tomorrow stay with god